Got to keep one homer ahead of the deadline, one point ahead of the curve. Up till now, we have worked with probabilities with a single x value. For example, how many hours you sleep at night, it's between 0 and 8 because that's when you set your alarm clock. And here's our probability distribution. We can even try to draw a picture to show what that probability looks like. Sleeping close to 8 hours is most likely. But could it be possible that the probabilities depend on something more than just how much you sleep? Could there also be a variable of how much exercise you get? And maybe that's somewhere between 0 and 1 because 1 hour of exercise is your goal. And this is a different probability distribution function that depends on both variables at the same time. You can probably imagine this is a very realistic thing. What happens if you get very little exercise? Well, over here, it's going to sap the probability for being able to sleep. Or what if you get lots of exercise, then it'll increase the probability of getting more sleep. And so they are a joint distribution because they affect each other. Can we draw a picture? Yeah, but it's not going to be a nice two-dimensional picture because we need an axis for sleep and an axis for exercise, and the probabilities are going to be three-dimensional floating over this, which I really don't have the skill to draw. But we can still check that this is a valid PDF. First off, it's always going to be positive, which is good, and the integration is going to need to be done in both x and y. So we have two integrals. How do you do that? Well, you're going to worry about the inside integral first, leaving all the y's in there, and then you have an integral left with y, and in this case it does come out to 1. This is a correct probability distribution. The steps for this, I'm assuming you've covered that before. If not, you may want to practice this a little bit. I'm not sure you really want video after video on how to do double integrals. Being able to do this kind of thing is very useful in real life. We can talk about exercise and sleep together, and let's do a probability here. I want to know the probability of more than 7 hours sleep, but less than 0.2 hours of exercise. And this is where our picture is super handy, even though I can't draw the three-dimensional probability floating over it. I can still look at sleep by exercise and say, okay, here's 7 hours of sleep, and here's 0.2 hours of exercise. And what do I want? I want more sleep, so on this end, but less exercise. I want the probability right in here. And so I'm looking for the area of some dome hanging over this tiny corner of the probability set. To solve it, I'm going to come over here to my PDF, and I'm going to integrate this, and I could do either dx dy or dy dx. Do I want to slice this way or slice that way? This example, it doesn't particularly matter. So I'm just going to choose to integrate across sleep and then exercise. I'll show an example later where it does matter. If I'm doing sleep first, then over here on the integral for sleep, it needs to go from 7 to 8. Look at my picture. If I'm talking about the exercise piece, it goes from 0 to 0.2, like this. All right, so I'm going to solve this middle piece first. The y's don't bother me. They're just numbers while I'm working with x. So this x squared is going to become a 1 third x cubed and this is going to be a 1 half x, and this is just going to have x with it, and then I'll put in 7, and I'll put in 8. This looks like a really long equation. It's just with the 8 and with the 7 in there. And what am I going to do next? I'm going to... In ah! When your equation is so big, you're pulling the board down, that's when you know you're doing something cool. Okay, then I'll be doing the integral with respect to y, so this becomes a 1 half y squared, and this becomes a 1 third y cubed, and then we put in the 0 and the 2 values for y. The good news being putting in 0 means all that goes away, and we're just left with a point 0.2, you know, squared and cubed. And I know my board doesn't really fit everything in there, but if you're drawing things carefully on your paper, just keep track of the pieces. None of the pieces are particularly hard, and you can solve for the probability. This was an example where it was easy because we had a nice block shape here. We could also do a probability like this. What's the probability that sleep and exercise add up to four hours? That's not going to be a block shape. Maybe the four hours is all sleep and there was no exercise, or we got a full hour of exercise but only three hours of sleep. So we end up with a shape like this. And everything inside this range is going to count as more than four added up together. This time it's going to matter which order we integrate in. 
because if you're taking up and down slices, then you can do this section, but then you have to stop and change for this section because this slanted line won't be going that way anymore. Or we can just go in this direction, and then we're doing the same thing all the way from 0 to 1. So what you want is to make the 0 to 1 be the last piece, meaning it's the integral furthest on the outside. Which variable is going 0 to 1? That's y. So on the outside, we have dy. Now, on the inside, we're going to integrate across dx. But the bounds aren't going to go all the way from 0 to 8 because we want to go from this line up to 8. So 8 is on the higher end, but this needs to be on the lower end. So we have an 8 here. How do we figure out what this is? Well, let's look at what this line represents. This was where x plus y added up to 4. So I want something here that's going to leave me with y's because I'm going to be integrating out the y's afterwards. So I need to solve this in terms of y. So x equals 4, subtract the y to the other side. That's my bound down here, 4 minus y. And what goes in the middle? My PDF, stick it right in there. I don't have a lot of space on this board, so I'm going to need to erase this so that I can have some room to write here. If I was doing this on my own, I would grab a new sheet of paper and say, okay, let's start working this out. First, integrating by x, and then putting in the value 8 minus the 4 minus y piece. And then I'm going to want to multiply out the 4 minus y cubed and the 4 minus y squared. You have no idea how long this takes me between each pause. But once you multiply it out, it's just a polynomial, not hard to integrate going to plug in 1. Fortunately, when you plug in 0, all of this just goes to 0. So the only thing I need to do is add up. So I add all those in, I get 600. Probabilities between 0 Oh, oh, I forgot. I pulled this 1 out of 740 out. I need to bring that back in. Don't forget any constants you pull out. That way my 653 gets divided by the 740. So I get 0.883. And there is my probability. So what three things do you need to remember when you're doing these? Number one, draw a picture of the two variables so that you can make a map of where you want to be integrating. And then carefully integrate the inside piece and then the outside piece. And double check that your answer is reasonable.